Hello and welcome back to another episode of the News You Miss, the video game news show that recaps all the big happenings in video game news that the big media outlets just seem not to care about. Today I've got a lot of Pokemon news, a lot of hidden lore that you might not have known about, some Nintendo news, a few PlayStation and Xbox stories, and just some gaming franchise stories. So if you're interested in getting caught up in this week, stay tuned. I want to thank all my patron subscribers and donators for those who support the show. One dollar gets you these videos a day early. You support the news, which remains free because I don't make a dime off of these YouTube videos, which means you don't have to have ad block on because there should be no ads. Hope you guys enjoy the ad free experience and let's go ahead and continue on. I want to begin with Kanto in 1996. There was a watercolor map, Pallet Town, Route 1, and a couple other locations that were put in here. They look really really nice i mean this almost looks like let's go esque art style and this was all the way back in 1996 check this out there's a lot of awesome high-res maps and i will leave the link in the description below i've never seen this before and it's absolutely awesome uh there's a pokemon type of watering can that was seen in generation 2 it's called the squirtle water bottle squirtle watering can and uh, pretty much looked like this which is absolutely adorable but now it's a reality and you can buy one one for yourself so if you're interested in this once again i will put the link in the description below looks really really cute a great present for any gardener that likes pokemon so the new pokemon snap was released recently and a developer has gone on to explain how long it was in the works and it was less than three years kind of see how good looking pokemon snap is and a lot of people will apply this to sword and shield and say well sword and shield should have looked like this but you gotta remember pokemon snap is a vastly different game from pokemon sword and shield in that it doesn't have any of the battle mechanics or anything like that put into the game whatsoever so it's just uh take pictures of pokemon right so it's pretty cool that this game was able to be produced within under three years and i think it's an absolute gem of a game if you have nintendo switch and you like pokemon you can't pass up this game it's uh it's a great experience a lot of fun recently streamed it on my twitch with my daughter and we just had a blast playing through the game also a pokemon fan reimagines the diamond and pearl remakes as full 3d games that that's pretty cool, but again, you know, we can reimagine all day long and Nintendo, Game Freak, the Pokemon Company, they're all going to come together and have a decisive conversation about the art style that they want to use. And we just have no input on it. Obviously, they probably see the sales of Sword and Shield and they're going to continue going down that route just because it's sold very, very well. So that's how it is. That's how companies are. But we can hope, right? Hey, Target stores and several other outlets are saying that they're going to stop selling Pokemon cards after shortages and fights that have occurred over Pokemon cards. Yeah, if you've been to your local Walmart, Target, and card dealer, you might notice that there's like no Pokemon cards. You know why? Because people are snatching them up and doing box openings on YouTube, gaining the ad revenue from that, gaining the views and all the clout from that, then turning around and posting them on eBay and scalping and making all kinds of money. So not to call out any Poketubers or people who do card pack openings, but for those who are scalping and engaging in this behavior, this is probably why this occurred so just imagine grown men fighting over pokemon cards insane the pokemon company has uploaded a teaser video for quote unquote project piplup which is a new program that's going to spread the charm of piplup across the world kind of a little random but that's pretty much all i have for that so pokemon difficulty tier according to masuda he stated that they made uh, ruby and sapphire relatively difficult then afterwards intentionally made fire red and leaf green a bit easier and then they made diamond and pearl and said difficulty in the middle so it goes easiest to hardest the gen 3 fire red leaf green remakes gen 4 diamond pearl and platinum and then gen 3 so gen 3 is considered the most difficult and trust me trust me the twins are a nightmare on generation 3 oh my god they are ridiculously difficult it's not a good time let me know what do you think about the difficulty curve so moving on to some nintendo news we have an oled display firm mentioning a switch pro during its q1 investors call 
which means we're going to get a Nintendo Switch Pro. All we know as of now confirmed is that it will have an OLED display. If you guys were curious what OLED displays are, you can look up PS Vita and the original PS Vita didn't have necessarily the same screen. And then there was a revision that launched and it was a big deal. And it was like, oh, OLED screen. OLED screens are better. That's just all it is, slightly better. In the grand scheme of things with the distance that you are from the screen, you want it to be a nice screen. And as it stands, the original Nintendo Switch still works quite well. So if you have an original Switch and the only change for the Pro is going to be an OLED screen, I wouldn't say that it's going to be anything like drastically worth getting. It's not like you're going from 480 to 1080p or you're going from 720p up to 4k all of a sudden there's no jump like that so there's an article that just sums up everything wrong with games journalists if you guys didn't know uh the calculator has launched on the nintendo switch right and over on metacritic there are people who are giving it like a 10 out of 10 just like it's a meme it's a joke like the calculator application on the nintendo switch but it does cost ten dollars and now i know a lot of people are gonna be like uh what why would i pay ten dollars for a calculator see that's the thing it's choice you're choosing to pay it so don't buy it right like it's just joke calculator right everybody has one on their phone on their computer but that doesn't mean somebody didn't have to program it and have to get paid that's all i'm saying with it anyways the article over on tech radar it, it's a complete joke because it just basically says herp derp nintendo don't have any good new games and they just re-release other games and they don't ever put things on sale and they charge too much money for their games and calculator is selling a lot and doing very very well and, and people shouldn't be rating it like 10 out of 10s. It's a big joke, man. You know, don't take it so serious. And my God, there's the sad Mario picture that's used every time Nintendo does something people don't agree. Oh, sad Mario on my thumbnail. Like, jeez, cut me a freaking break. Japanese magazine Koro Koro is holding a very special Pokemon Snap contest in Japan. And the prize is going to be a Nintendo Switch that has uh, been customized. And it is absolutely great. This is a beautiful Nintendo Switch. I would absolutely love to get it. Sometimes they have very strange, unique Nintendo Nintendo Switches, some of them are nice, some of them are very gaudy and disgusting, but this one is beautiful and I like it a lot. Nyko Pixel Quest Arcade Kit allows you to construct a customized Pixel Arcade Center for you to put your Switch in and put two like joysticks on the Joy-Cons and basically you just have yourself a home arcade. It's pretty small, but it's still cool and it's very, very cheap at around $16 on Amazon Prime. If you're interested, check it out. Anyways, we're going to continue on. Did you guys know back in the day that there were talks with Nintendo? discussing an exclusive Spider-Man game on the Wii. It was going to be very motion control heavy game, but it was scrapped due to Nintendo of America's Reggie fils reportedly being deathly afraid of spires and calling them yucky. That is hilarious, but at the same time, I would like to point out the fact that it being heavily reliant on motion controls is a 0 out of 10 for me, and I probably wouldn't have enjoyed it, and I know a lot of other people who wouldn't have enjoyed it. So there's a rumor that the next Donkey Kong is being developed by the Super Mario Odyssey team. I mean, it's been a rumor for ages, but eh, you know, something to look out for. I would love a Donkey Kong Country in the style of Super Mario Odyssey. Would you? You let me know in the comments down below. Uh, this month's Humble Bundle is well worth getting. Some of the more top tier games that are available is Undertale, uh, This War of Mine, The Final Cut, Super Hot, and Bioshock Remastered, but there are a lot more games. It's only $20 and 100% of the proceeds go to helping people with COVID-19 in support of a charity, so check that out. You still have one to two days to get it. Sony expects PS5 shortages to continue into next year. Wow, shock. I'm super shocked. Wow, that's crazy. Just enjoy buying it from the scalpers for two to $300 more. There are also leaks that suggest that PS VR 2 will feature 4K display, eye tracking, haptic feedback, and more. Uh, I'm not particularly sure if it's going to be a 4K display. That seems a little bit exaggerated for a VR headset, but there it is. So we, we will see. Maybe it will compete with the Oculus Rift. Maybe it won't. We'll see. The Xbox X and S series now feature the original Xbox animated background, the startup, and uh, a lot of thematic. Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance is coming to Game Pass day one, so you don't have to spend a dime if you have Game Pass. That's really, really cool. I'm excited for that. I want to play through it with Jen, and I'll tell you all about it later on. Sony has also revealed that new black and red editions of the PS5 DualSense controller are coming, and they look very, very nice. I would just like an all-black PS5, and I would like it to not look like it has a tumor where the CD ROM drive is. I don't think that's a lot to ask for, but the controller is a step in the right direction. Would you buy these controllers? You let me know in the comments down below. Over 25 games are in development from PlayStation Studios for PS5, uh, nearly half of which are new IPs, says Herman Holst, which is a representative of PlayStation Studios.
videos uh, you can check a link to the full interview down below but the point is you're going to get a lot of new playstation games it's not a shock just because they're in development doesn't mean they're going to come out this year or next year probably through the course of the playstation's life which will be five to ten years disney is bringing lucasfilm classic games zombie ate my neighbors and ghoul patrol to the switch i'm not really into ghoul patrol but zombies ate my neighbors is a great time it's an amazing co-op game if you have a switch and you've never played it or you only played it a little bit back in the day or you're a massive fan i implore you to get zombies ate my neighbors you'll have a great time with it it's absolutely fun and you'll have more fun if you're doing it on co-op sega is also considering rebooting dormant series like crazy taxi and jet set radio while planning a brand new quote-unquote super game so they could be anything i mean honestly they couldn't do any worse than what they've done already uh sega's doing really really great but man i would love to see some of their dormant series to come back how about you uh, so an ai research group released a new video showcasing photorealism enhancement tool being applied to gta 5 and the results are quote unquote stunning i guess it makes it look more realistic i've always been one who grew up way back in the day where there was an atari 2600 and a nintendo so let me tell you just the base gta 5 on a 360 is plenty realistic to me but this is even more amazing sega says it's cool with sonic fans provided that there's no profit involved the sonic the hedgehog 2 movie has wrapped up filming and so mushroom planet is likely to return really really excited about this been following it for a while and uh, i'm excited to see the next film the original sonic was a good time if you never watched it you probably should fable 4 on the xbox x series has been given a trailer if you, <laughs> you guys thought fable was dead i guess it's not hopefully it won't be as bad as fable 3 or legends or any other game past 2 finally i want to close on this destiny 2 season of splicers launched it's an excellent season it involves mithrax and the house of light and fallen being in the tower and working with fallen to defeat the vex a uh, kaito's still there with the cabal it seems that we're making a lot of alliances and enemies to fight darkness this is a pretty cool season so far it has you doing events where you're going into the vex network and destroying the vex and disrupting the vex while also trying to figure out why there's a dark curtain over the city if you guys are interested in destiny or you haven't played in a while jump back in it's easier now more than ever with many many updates to streamline the gaming process of destiny you guys really have been great i am glad that you guys came and watched my show thank you for your support your views are all that's necessary if you want to support me more directly hit up patreon you can follow me on twitter all the socials are in the description below hit me up on discord i'm always there i always get messages there and other than that i really appreciate you coming back time after time i'll see you guys in the next episode of the news you missed and as always good gaming god bless and thanks for watching